So it's been a while since I've kind of taken on this subject and I know that I have a video that everybody really seemed to like about animating your character and getting it ready for Unity. And then, uh, just to be honest with everybody, life happened. I'm a teacher. I'm also the coach of a robotics team. And um, yeah, it just it got away from me. But I have now finally finished animating this character and we're going to bring it into Unity and I'm going to show you how to get this character into Unity and how to get it to um, be animated uh, with code. So we're going to talk a, a lot about how to set this up and, and do all that. Um, and uh, But first, I wanted to show you what the character had, like all the different animations that I created, because I think this is a good base set of animations. Of course, you can always do a lot more. And once you learn how to use the animator um, in Unity, then the rest of it actually becomes really simple. So let's just take a look at this and uh, just show you what I've got. So here's I've got I've got the character that I created in in uh, Make Human, and I've got a whole series of animations here, and you can see them. Um, I've got an aiming up and aiming down, crouch, idle, a crouch walking, a death, an idle, a jumping, a running, a strafe left, and a strafe right. Uh, as well as a walking and a walking backwards. That's basically, that. that's a really good list of animations. You can, of course, go way further than that, but there's not really a need to. So let's just take a look at what these all basically are really quickly, and, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take you to, the, to Unity and show you how to import this. So what I have here is this is just my, um, this is my idle animation. And the idle animation, uh, I just copied that first keyframe and then it aims down. He just bends down and he looks all the way down. And I'm going to show you how to set this up so that your up and down mouse movement will actually uh, control how much of this animation actually gets uh, played, if you will. So the animation may stop here depending on the mouse movement or here or here or so on and so forth. Uh, and then the Aiming up is exactly the opposite. And you can do that while running. I'm going to show you how to do what we call a mask. Then we have a crouch and an, a simple idle. It's not the best animation. Uh, he's rotating. I'm not quite sure why he's rotating there. But I'll, I, I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then a crouch walking. I actually think that one's pretty cool. And then a dying animation. Again, maybe not the best. You can also make multiple death animations for your character. You could move it to a rag doll. There's a whole ton of things that you can do. It, it really just depends on what you want to do. But I'm gonna just, we're going to use this, and uh, we'll we'll just I'll show you how that uh, how it's done. And then I have an idle animation that's just very simple, and you can see he wavers a little bit. A lot of idle animations and a lot of video games are far more complicated than that, but. And this works. And then a jumping, which is just simply a one frame, and I'll show you why in a, uh, once we get into Unity. Um, you can do more than that, obviously. Then here's my running animation. And my strafe left. And what's funny is it looks kind of weird because I'm not going to use the motion of the character itself. And that's actually really important to note. There are a couple different ways that you can do this you can have your character moving inside the animation. And then in Unity, you can tell Unity to use the animation of the actual root. Well, it, call, it says use root animation in Unity, but we're not gonna do that. So I have a player strafe left and a player strafe right. And both of those are in place. And then walking is in place as well. His legs are a little widespread for me, but that's, you know, whatever. Uh, again, this isn't perfect, but uh, I might, you know, do it. And then here we have a walk backwards animation, which literally is the same animation as the walk forwards. I just reversed it. Really simple. Uh, maybe I'll do a quick little demo on how to reverse animations, but it's, it's pretty simple to do. So that's all good and, and done. So I'm going to save that just to make sure everything is good. And now we're going to bring this into our game. So I'm going to close Blender, and here I have Unity all opened up. Now, I need to take this, and I, I have a user character in here. This is not the one that I want to use. So I'm going to make a new folder here, and I'm going to call this New Player. I kind of set this up to do tests for characters. 
and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say uh, show in Explorer. So here I've got this new player folder here. And I have my um, make human character and all the Blender files and everything like that uh, in, in another folder. Here it is. And I'm just going to take these and let's just, we're just going to copy it over. So there I made a quick copy. And now I should be able to click into Unity and Unity is going to chain or import the character. Uh, material is using the texture as a normals map. It must be marked as a normals map. So you can click on that and then uh, if there's a normals map in there, it, uh, it comes in as a normals map. So here we have our player character. There he is. And what that is. Oh, that's the... Um, so this is actually really important. So when you bring your character in, you have your OBJ that you may have, um, or your 3D object that you exported out of Make Human that had all the, had the armature in it and the textures and everything like that. That's also going to show up. You don't have to import that into Unity if you don't want to. I, I recommend that you do just because it's always not, I just like to have everything in one folder. I, I, I just find that so much easier. If everything's in one folder, then I know where it all is and it just becomes a lot simpler. Uh, but if it's confusing you, you can you can move it. And what I, what you want to do is you don't want to move it until after you import it because Unity kind of keeps track of everything. So it's really important to not do that until later. So if it's really bothering you, you can you can take that this stuff and you can move it. I'm not going to worry about it. I know that this is my player character and I named it player character when I named the Blender file on purpose so that I had that sitting in there and you can see my character is right there. Now what's really cool about this is if you go here and you take a look at the rig, select it to humanoid, and it should basically do that. And then you can uh, create the definition from this model and click apply. What this is gonna do is this is trying to tell Unity that your, your rig, your character's rig is a humanoid rig. And you can try and configure it here and it will just, you know, you can, tell it what is what and it has the list here of what um, what bones control what parts of the body so you can see that the spine spine is the ch is the base of the spine the spinal 2 is the chest spinal 3 is the upper chest so if this all comes in everything should be green you may have these little dotted lines i think that basically means like hey it's working but we're, it's not exactly the way that unity likes it but it is exactly what came out of make human and it should be good enough so once that's all set and if you have to you can you can change things by the way too by hitting the target buttons you can choose a um a bone uh, and actually this brings up a, a one of the things that i might suggest is depending upon what you're doing you'll notice it says pelvis spine spine 02 spine 03 and if we were to go back into our um, i'm just going to hit done if i were to go into my player character let's go back into unity and if I click on my armature here, you can see that under the bones, that's, that's what they're named. If you're going to have multiple characters, like an enemy character and a player character, and they're going to have different skeletons, especially if they're going to have different skeletons, but even if you're going to import multiples, one of the things that I really recommend is doing this, player thigh. And I, you just copy and paste that throughout all of the throughout all of the bones. And it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it will help you because you'll know what bone is actually belonging to this character. And right now it's not that big of a deal, but if I go and I have an enemy or multiple characters, all of a sudden it becomes a huge deal. And I'm, I'm uh, let's just, I'm just going to do a couple here so that you can see it. Well, actually, I'll, I'll do them all, and then I'll just fast-forward through it. So, yeah, let me just do this, and we'll go from there. All 
Okay, so I finally did it. That didn't take too long, maybe seven or eight minutes. Um, I'm not sure. I'll look later. Um, but there you go. So it's all done. So now I'm going to save this again. I haven't really changed anything. I've just changed the name of the bones. And uh, it's closed. Now, the really interesting thing will just be to see how Unity gets, gets it in there. Um, so let me just... Um, take a look here at my rig and hit configure and look at that so now the bones all say player pelvis and then if i were to na need to change them they're all there first off in alphabetical order by player but you'll you'll see that there's others other things like eyebrow mesh and character mesh and other different things that may be from other characters or other objects that are in your unity project that might not actually have to do with the player so I find that is a really important little thing. Uh, it's kind of an aside, but it, it is a, a really good thing to do. So now I can uh, go down here. We're going to hit done, and we're going to uh, we're going to go over to the animation, and here I have my character without his hair. What happened to his hair? Oh, it shows up at certain places. One of the things that I've always kind of decided to do is I've always decided that the best thing to do is just take your where's my scene terrain F. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm just going to take my player character and drop him right there in the center and uh, just kind of see what he looks like. Now, this is another problem. So you see he looks really bright and look at that. There's a light bulb. So one of the things that Unity has started to do, and I, I I like this, but I keep forgetting about it, is if you have a camera and or a light in your character, it's going to import that. So that's actually not really great for us. So let's double click again, and we're gonna open it. And then I'm going to, uh, let's drill all this down. Here's my light, let's delete it. We really don't need it anymore. Save. Let's close Unit, uh, Blender and we'll go back into Unity and it's going to re-import and now that light is gone. So now I can see my character, I can see his textures, I can see everything. Click on him once, hit the F key, that resets my scrolling and everything like that. Uh, and I can really kind of see exactly what my character is looking like in the animation, or in the game, I should say. And that looks pretty darn good. Okay. So now that I've got this, now I'm ready to kind of start setting up um, my, I'm going to start setting up my player and I'm going to start setting up my prefab for the character itself. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to go over here and you have animations and you should be able to, here you go, you've got clips, you've got scene and I don't know what scene, what scene, it used to, they used to come in automatically. So I'm going to come in here and, um, say scene one and I should be able to, The actions aren't coming in. So what I'm confused about is in the past, what's happened for me is my clips come in as my my animations because I've built them into the uh, into the action editor. They've come in as separate things. So if I take a look here, you see how I've got all these different action actions they should be coming in as animations inside Unity, and I am not exactly sure why they're not. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so I figured it out, and I wasn't expecting this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, apparently this worked in 2019.2, but it doesn't work in 2019.3, which is what I'm in right now. So, or actually, it may be using Blender. No, because I'm using Blender 2.2. I was using Blender 0.28. Uh, with 2019.2 as well, but uh, this game is in 2019.3. So here's the deal. I'm going to show you how to use this if your import doesn't work, but uh, hopefully it would work. One of the things that I've always loved about Unity is the ability just to take stuff straight from Blender and all the animations are there and everything like that without having to worry about a second step. But uh, apparently you have to worry about a second, a second step. So, I've got my character open in. Uh, I've got my character open in Blender, and what you're going to do is you only need one scene. You're going to go to export, and you're going to go to export FBX. 
We're gonna come up here, and this is, it's funny, this is kind of the way the Unreal Engine works, which is one of the reasons why I've always liked to use Unity a little bit better, is you have to export. Every time you make a change to your character, you have to re-export again, and it's kind of annoying. But hey, it is what it is. So here you have your export, and then you won't run into problems like the camera and the lamp won't be there and that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna take my player character, and I'm just gonna say player character.fbx. And then there's a couple of things that are important. First off, scale set to one. You know, you can play with that if you want. Uh, y up, Z forward. That's important because Blender uses Z up and Y forward and Unity flips it around. So you want this set to Z forward and Y up. And then you're gonna go here to your armatures. And that should work. And here under bake animation, you want that checked. Keyframe all bones, NLA strips, yes, and all actions. And these two are really important. That's what happens. This is what's going to help you get your actions into Unity. So I'm going to hit F, uh, export FBX. It's going to take a little while, believe it or not. And once it's done, I should be able to close that. And then my player character here shows up. Um, oh, hit apply. And if I click on my... Oh, if I click on my FBX, now all of a sudden this is what I was expecting uh, to happen when I brought in my Blender. And, and usually it used to, but if it doesn't, then a really good fix is to take your Blender file, export it to an FBX, and then it exports all the animations. And now I can go through each animation and I can preview it and you can see exactly what's going to happen with those animations and just go through each one and kind of make sure that they are exactly what you want them to be that they're the right animation sometimes it happens where you export it and it might be the wrong animation so it might say idle and it might be a running animation or something weird like that but that's kind of rare and then obviously my jumping is like that you know because it's only one frame I've got my running, and if things are a little slow, don't worry about that right now because we can actually adjust the speed of the animations once we get into the animation controller. So this all looks actually really good. I've got my walking backwards, I've got my walking. So yeah, I've checked everything, it looks really good. Now I've got a couple other things that we wanna do here. I'm gonna take this down. And for each one, you want to set a couple of things. First off, for aiming down and aiming up, those are like gonna be like one-time animations. In other words, we don't want them to loop. So we don't want the loop time checked. However, for the idle and the walking and all those, we do want them looped. So you're gonna check that button here like this and go through each one and hit the loop time and loop pose. Well, loop time, should it should be good enough. Um, Death, we don't want death to loop, to loop. We want the idle to loop. Jumping, we don't need the loop. Running, we want to loop. Strafe left, we want to loop. Strafe right, we want to loop. Walking, we want to loop. And walking backwards, we want to loop. So right now, I'm just gonna take each one of those, set it, and then you're gonna hit the apply button. Sometimes this takes a little while, sometimes it doesn't. Um, depends on the speed of your computer. But now I should be able to kind of check on these. Um, and they'll loop in the animation window anyway. Uh, so even if that's not checked, uh, it, it, they will loop. And you can just see how it loops. Now, let me say that maybe this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is important that your animations in Blender actually loop. So you don't want to, you know, if your first keyframe and your last keyframe of your animation aren't the same, then guess what? This isn't going to work. You'll have a little weird jump at the end. And of course, you, you don't want that. So now we're going to set up our basic animation controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my FBX. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say create. And I'm going to create a prefab variant. And I'll just call this player character variant. And in my player character variant, we've got uh, all sorts of cool stuff in here. So I'm going to double click on that. This takes me into kind of an isolation mode. And you can see your character and you can kind of see all these things and you've got these components. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to start adding some components. So the first one I'm going to add 
is going to add a character controller. And you'll see this little pill here, this for your character controller. That pill kind of defines the borders of the boundaries of your character. So let's say you're walking through a forest. It will help the character navigate through the trees. If this is set too big, your character can get wedged in between objects or get blocked by objects that you might think you should be able to get through. If it's too small, you'll be able to walk through areas where you might not be able to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the height a little bit. I'm going to take its center. I'm going to move it up in the Y. Take its radius. and I'm going to move it out to cover basically the core of the character. Okay. And that's really what I want to do. The other thing that this, this character controller does control is it also controls where the feet are going to strike the terrain. So this is actually really important. So right now, if I had it the way that I, I have it right now, my character would probably start floating above the terrain. So I just want to kind of make sure that this is set uh, well. What I'm doing here is I'm using the the box here to kind of set up my my stuff. If I click the um, the center uh, rectangle or square, that turns perspective on and off, and then I can use this to kind of check and make sure that the pill, that's what I like to call it. It's probably a stupid name, but that the pill is actually set up to be exactly where I want it to be. So that actually looks really good. That does look really good, although I feel like it needs to be forward a little bit in the z-axis. So we're just going to bring it forward a little bit. And that's going to kind of help uh, it be a little bit more centered on the body. So that looks pretty good now. We've got that. I'm also going to add a rigid body. We can tag this as our player. And I should be able to get out of this. Let's get rid of this. And we can take our player character variant and we can drag it in here. And now you can see we've kind of got this all set up with, with, uh, with everything. And I, I don't have a main character. What I, one of the tests that I liked, or a, not a main character, haha, <laughs> a main um, camera. So one of the things that I like to do is I'm just going to take my character here. He doesn't have a main camera. But I'm going to uh, add a camera to my variant here. And I'm going to, for now, we're just going to put it right up in the, uh, attached to the player's head. So there's my head. And I'm going to say game object. And there's a camera. I'm going to drag it into the player's head there, make it a child of the player's head. And then I'm going to go over here to my positions. And I'm going to zero it out. And then we'll, we'll bring it forward just a little bit here and, and kind of bring it in line with the eyes uh, for the time being. Actually, probably bring it down a little bit. There we go. Uh, and we kind of see the hand here. So that, that's probably a pretty good uh, starting setup. And so now I can take my scene. Let's split it over here. I can see what my guys looking like and I can hit oh, all compiler errors I downloaded and imported the standard assets file which is not really cleared to work with 2019 and it's causing me troubles so if you do that don't don't do that so now I should be able to hit play and my character should drop down and he doesn't uh, I'm not sure why not sometimes this happens so one of the things that I will do and you're going to have to do this anyway, is put a collider on the foot. So I'm going to take the foot here. I'm going to add a uh, collider. I'm going to do a box collider on the foot. And holy cow, that's massive. So I just rescale it by dragging these little guys around here. Hit the F key and zoom in here. This is rather interesting. Um, and my X is really big. And I did not expect this to be such a size difference here. It's rather interesting. You know what? I want to do it on the ball of the foot. Let's 
copying component and now we're going to remove it and we're going to go in the ball because the toes are more level so we'll do a box collider and we'll paste our component values and now see that that's actually flat which is nice 0 0.02 And the X, 0 0.015, 0 0.01. There we go. So that's getting to be roughly the size of the foot. 0 0.005. There we go. And I can move it up a little bit if I need to. Ooh, whoops. Wow, that's really twitchy. Negative 0 0.01. 005, 02, there we go. And uh, once I get that locked in, I can copy my component, and then I'll go over to the other foot, and I will add another box collider, and I will paste the values. And so now I've got two box colliders on the toes, and what should happen now is I should be able to have my character just kind of fall and rest on the terrain. Nice. Okay. Now, um, if I go back to my variant, one of the things that you want to do is you always want to freeze rotation. Okay. And the reason for that is if you're not careful, your character can fall over really easily. And we're going to control that with our animations. So we don't want to do it here with the rigid body. So now, because you saw him tilt a little bit when I did that last, and now he's not doing it. So that's rather nice. And uh, we're, we're well on our way to getting ourselves set up for uh, an animation uh, or for our animation setup. Okay, hopefully this has been a good start into setting up your character and getting your character ready for animations. We've just set up our prefab, we've set up our character controller, we've set up our rigid body. So in the next demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take those animations that we exported and we're going to bring them uh, into what we call an animator controller. We're going to set them up so that we can call those animations with code. So that'll be part three. Part three will be setting up all the animations and then part four will be actually showing you how to call those animations in the code. So hopefully this was a help. If you enjoyed it, if uh, it gave you some good information, please subscribe, give it a like. If I did something wrong or if there's a way that there, or, or if there's a better way of doing something, please let me know in the comments. I'm always trying to learn uh, new things. And uh, I thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and stay healthy.